My Lords, I begin this proof of amendments by making a general comment in expressing concern about the way in which this government and others have sought to judge and rank higher education institutions and directed the Office for Students to do so. And I would associate myself with the comments of the noble Baroness Lady Morris of Yardley about universities being penalised welcoming students who've succeeded in their school and college studies despite the socio-economic odds. I would add a more general concern about the ranking of institutions by the level of pay or classification of jobs that graduates attain. Education should be for life, not just for jobs. And we know that there's often an inverse relationship between the levels of pay in a role and the contribution that that makes to society. An anthropology graduate who, say, goes into community organising might never earn much at all, but is making a huge contribution to our society in a highly fulfilling role. But it's encouraging to see that these amendments do all in some way seek to make the judgments fairer so they're to be welcomed. To go through those in turn, and speakers already have uh, concentrated quite a lot on Amendment 63 in the names of, name of the noble Lord Lucas, also backed by the noble uh, Baroness Lady Garden Frognall. And I think it's worth, in this context, pointing to an important report from the British Psychological Society from 2019, titled Mental Health and Wellbeing in Higher and Further Education. And I should perhaps preface what I'm about to say by saying this is, does contain some disturbing material. At least 95 university students took their own lives in 2016-17. While the rate of suicide is lower than the general population, it's a serious concern for the sector and a third of students experience a serious psychological issue that requires professional help. And 94% of higher education providers have reported an increase in demand for counselling services. And this, of course, my lords, was in 2019. All of the evidence and anecdote that we have suggests it's likely to be significant worse, net worse now. And this report, uh, professional report, says all a higher and further education institutions should make mental health and wellbeing a strategic priority. And I think it particularly focuses on the need to train all staff and how to insist them in signposting to the right support. There's also an important report noted here about UCAS needing to update the application process to reduce stigma, removing the need for applicants to disclose mental health conditions as disability. And I think if we think about the practicalities of this, this report cites a student's mind research that found many academics feel ill-equipped uh, to uh, assist students when they encounter their difficulties or are approached by them. I think this is a pretty obvious problem when you think about it. A PhD and postgraduate studies in physics or in medieval history really doesn't necessarily equip you to deal with situations that you might be faced. And this, of course, has a substantive negative impact on the well-being of academics as well. So I move now to a whole series of amendments moved by the noble lady Baroness Sherlock, and I'm slightly handicapped by the fact that um, these have not really been properly introduced. Uh, I'm not going to cover them in great detail, um, except to note that I think 65, which calls that um, for consultation with providers over the way in which these assessments are made, is obviously essential. Um, the assessment needs to be embedded in real world experience and practical possibilities of what's deliverable. And then I come to 66, also in the name of the noble lady, Baroness Sherlock, to which I've also um, attached my name. And I think the noble Baroness Lady Morris Yardley expressed support for it. This um, amendment seeks to ensure that um, the OFS um, in its uh, uh, outputs reflects, quote, differences in student characteristics, different institutions or types of institution, different subjects or courses or any other such factor, close quote. And I think here I'm drawing on my experience as a school governor. And of course, in schools, we have increasingly sought to go towards looking at what value has been added, acknowledging that students start from many different starting points. That's true at all levels of our school system, but it's also very much true of our higher education sector. Um, and a university that caters particularly well to students who perhaps haven't necessarily had a great experience in school or college, um, it really deserves to be their approach, their successes really need to be acknowledged fairly um, in the assessment. And I think moving also on to um, uh, 68, which is uh, Amendment 68, also in the name of the Labour Lady Baroness Sherlock, 
um, which I think you know, makes a related point that it must ensure that the measure of student outcomes does not jeopardise widening participation for students from disadvantaged and unrepresented groups. Um, and finally, just to mention Amendment 70, also by the noble lady Baroness Sherlock, um, the OFS must work together with the devolved authorities, something I feel like I'm somewhat um, should have a hymn book to, um, to speak on uh, as I do it in practically every bill that we're talking about, but it clearly is clear for the interests of students, uh, prospective students and indeed employers that these assessments are conducted fairly. Thank you, my lords.